Let's enjoy indeed, for this is the Christmas season. We celebrate the greatest gift ever given. Emmanuel, God with us. Even as we give and receive gifts, as we exchange gifts, let us continue to be reminded of the greatest gift ever given. The Lord Jesus Christ, given for us, that you and I may know God and receive the greatest gift of eternal life. Kumusta po ang ating mga celebration? Kumusta po ang ating mga gift giving? Ako po may natanggap po akong gift. Bubuksan po natin. Gusto niyo hulaan kung ano laman? Bahay. Bahay? Ano pa? Ref? Ano pa? Ano ba? Bike? Ano pa? Huh? Punch ball. Okay. Panyo? Oven? Blanket? <laughs> Wig down to pay? Anyone else? Yung mga kahula, may premyo. Uh, disclaimer, alam po naman ng binuksan ko na I just had it re-wrap so that I can use it on a substitution for this sermon. Sige na, yung mga kahula. Yung series na sagot, panyo ba naman? Ref ba naman yan? Speaker? Electric fan? Washing machine? Rice cooker? Anyone else? Shampoo? Good for ilang years kaya yan. Eh, ma- matakaw ako sa shampoo gumamit. Eh. Walang laman? Walang laman? Gift box? <laughs> Shoes? Cell phone? Gift certificate? Laki namang gift certificate yan. Wala na? Anyone else? Pain reliever. Anyone else? Wala na? Sige, unwrap natin. Buksan natin. Unboxing. <coughs> wala na? Wala nang hula? Wala daw laman? Meron, may laman. Teddy bear? Anyone else? Laksan nyo. Hindi ko marinig. M2, what did you say? Cash? <laughs> ba, magkano kaya laman ito? Ano pa? Unan? Bible? Hair grower? <laughs> Lalabas ko na? Reveal na, reveal. Reveal. Ta-da! Anong tawag dito? Langgana. Well, this, uh, this is a gift uh, I received in our exchange gift with the uh, mothers of the KKKK community during Saturdays. But maybe we have this ministry for the children, for the youth. And then during those sessions, I hold a Bible study for, for the mothers. And so we decided to have our own exchange gifts. And yung nakabunot sa akin, well, actually prior to the Sunday, nag- Saturday, nagkaroon kami ng exchange gift, tinatanong ako ng mga mothers, ano gusto niyo, pastor? Ano gusto niyo? Siyempre, una kong sag- sagot, iPhone 15. Eh, kaya lang yung budget namin, syempre, maliit lang. Okay, maliit lang yung budget. May amount, di ba? So, ang category, gamit sa bahay. So, kinukulit ako. Actually, yung name ko, nilagay, hindi ako naglagay ng item. Na any will, will do for me. Eh, kulit ng kulit. Sabi ko, iPhone 15. Oh, iPhone 15 case? Oh. Ay, hindi. Timba na lang, timba. O kaya yung batya. <laughs> 
and then I received this. Well, even as I received this, uh, I felt appreciated by the one who got my name. Bakit? Kasi uh, I learned that the amount, the cost of this is double nung pinag-usapan. So double nung pinag-usapan. And I know that the one who gave me, hindi naman galing sa marangyang pamilya. So I know, meron din kind of sacrifice on her part to give me this gift. Kaya na-appreciate ko. So when I was preparing for this sermon, I remember this gift. So I had it re-wrapped and then para magamit sa sermon na to. So this is a gift. And today, we'll be looking at the story of after the birth of Jesus when wise men came to visit and gave gifts to the infant or the child Jesus. So we'll be covering Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. Tayo tayo at ipumbasahin ang mga verses. Let's read together. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when he rose and had come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for it is written by the prophet. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. After listening to the king, they went on their way, and behold, the star that they had seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned in the dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. Pray tayo. Lord, we come before you again with our hearts, longing, Lord, that you would speak to us and grant us this wonderful knowledge and experience of our one true God, Lord Jesus Christ, who was born for us. We commit our time to you, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you'll make me your mouthpiece this morning. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You may now be seated. Thank you. So, wise gifts. And very, very aware po tayo dito sa kwentong patungkol po sa mga bagay na to. Sabi po dito, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose and come to worship him. So may mga key terms po tayong discuss dito. Bethlehem, the place. <clears throat> Herod, the king. Wise men from the east. And then king of the Jews. The star. So, mga key terms about nung pagbisita po ng mga wise men kay Jesus. Simulan po natin kay King Herod. King of the Palestine during that time. Siya po ay hindi galing sa lineage ni Jacob. Kaya nung sinabi ng mga wise men, nasan yung isinilang ng King of the Jews? Natreten siya. Kasi hindi legit yung kanyang pagka-king sa Palestine. And so, 
nag-react siya doon and he told the wise men, sige, puntahan niyo. Ako din mag-worship. Pero sa mind niya, iba yung nasa plano niya. So ito yung si King Herod. Just, uh, you don't have to look at all the words. Gusto ko lang to give you a vague idea uh, of what a king is in the time of that. <clears throat> Siya si King Herod the Great. The Great. Ang timeline niya ay 37 to 4 BC, estimate. So siya yun. Siya yun nung pinanak si Jesus, siya yun nagpapatay ng mga babies afterwards. So binigyan ko lang kayo ng chart just to inform you na when you read the scripture, there are many King Herods. Hindi iisang King Herod yun. So ito yun, kay Jesus, nung pinanak si Jesus, pinapatay niya mga baby, nagkaroon siya ng maraming anak, ang isa sa kanila ay si Herod Antipas. Ito yung nagpapugot ng ulo ni John the Baptist. So, ibang hero yon, Okay? So, ito yung mga anak. Apparently, hindi sa line niya doon yung next na king, dito sa isang hero na to. Ito yung sinilang si Herod Agrippa. Siya naman yung nagpapatay kay Apostle John, James, at yung nagpapulong kay Peter. So, iba na naman tong king hero na to. And eventually, meron pa rito isa pang king. Nung nag-trial na si Paul, iba na ulit si Herod Agripatu. Okay? So, nandito rin yung, kung nabasa nyo yung about si Herodias, pinakasalan yung uncle, uncle, so, ito yung dito yan. Okay? So, ito yung, kumbaga, genealogy ng Herod the King. Just want to share with you. Okay? So, when you read the scripture, you like, ay, hindi pala isang king yun, nung, hindi pala isang Herod yun, nung panahon na yun, saka yun, iba na yun. So, this is Herod, threatened by the coming of the wise men because king of the Jews ang hinahanap nila. So, natreten yung kanyang pagiging king. Wise men. Okay? Traditionally, pag umaawi tayo, ano yung kantang yun? May nagsidalaw. May ilan? May tatlong? Hari. <clears throat> so, Bakit naging tatlong hari? Tapos may mga pangalan pa, di ba? Haring, Melchor, Gaspar, Baltasar. So, those are results of traditions. Na eventually, because tatlo yung gifts, uh, kinunote na lang na tatlo yung hari. And also because some things na some think na dahil yung in-offer ay in-offer ng mga kings to the great king, maaning hari sila. But the scripture tells us that they were wise men. Magi, M-A-G-I, sa other translations. So, we, we focus on what the scripture is telling us. They were wise men, learned men. Um, people learned in astronomy. That's why when the star rose, they followed the star. They were studying the stars their, their, their whole life. And scholars believe that they were influenced. They were probably from Babylon, from the east. So scholars believe that they were influenced by, by the Jewish people who moved to the east. Probably may dalang mga, mga scrolls and heard about the coming of the Messiah. And so, learned men studying the stars, and when the star rose, they knew this is a different star. And so, they followed the star. They traveled far in order, ang intention nila is to offer the gifts and worship. So, ito yung mga wise men or magi. Okay. So, pastor, paano yan? Yung bilen ko, May baby Jesus, may, fa- may Joseph, may Mary, may mga pas- pastol, may mga pastor, uh, pastol, mga shepherd. Tama naman yun kasi, di ba, when Jesus was born, may mga tupa. Uh, tandaan lang niya nga, kung may tupa yung manger niyo, yung bilen niyo, uh, hindi yung dala ng mga shepherd. Kasi, alam ka naman, bumisita ka, dala-dala mo yung maring kasi manger yon, may, may sariling mga tupa. Ngayon, pwede ko balagyan ng three kings yung aking bilen. Kung gusto nyo makatipid, huwag na nyo lagyan. Sabihin nyo na lang, 
wala pa yung wise men, nagta-travel pa lang. Uh, ilagay nyo sa kapitbahay. Yung... But anyway, these are minor, minor details about your urban land. Let's not quarrel about that. Okay? Pag pumunta ko sa bahay nyo, nakita ko yung meron three kings yung inyong bilhin, okay lang. Basta masarap yung papakain sa akin. But for your information, this is what the scripture has told us. Uh, wise men, not three, not kings, many wise men, hindi tatlo. We don't know how many. Okay? Star. So what is this phenomenon? Phenomenon uh, is this uh, star about the planets aligning? Well, scholars debate about this, but what we know is this is a very unique star that grows. And so when the wise men learned about it, they were studying about it, they saw it, they followed it. They believed probably that this is a prophecy from, from the Old Testament where it says, I see him, but not now. I behold him, but not near. A star shall come out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel. It shall crush the forehead of Moab and break down all the sons of Sheb. So, probably they, they believe that this is what a fulfillment of the Old Testament. Now, tinawag na king of the Jews, sabi ng mga wise men, pagdating nila sa kay King Herod, we had come to worship the king of the Jews born king of the Jews. And so, Herod was threatened and they were using, the wise men were using the term king of the Jews because they believed that this is a fulfillment of the Old Testament prophecy regarding the coming of the Messiah, the king of the Jews, the one who will shepherd Israel. Now, talking about prophecy, I would like again, you know, I'm your senior pastor, whenever we I hope that our church will not come to the point of misusing the word prophecy. Prophecy can mean two things. One is future telling. The other one is foretelling. Future telling, foretelling. Yung future telling, yung practice kasi ito ng marami, even outside the church, yung mga kultu, kultura, manguhula, titignan ano yung posibilit na mangyayari sa future, um, ano, again, as a church, we have to be careful with how the culture uh, influences us. Minsan, hindi natin napapansin, in, napasokan na pala tayo ng mga practices na wala namang, hindi naman yun ang sinasabi ng Biblia. Uh, yung future telling, hit and miss. Di ba? Walang claim na lahat laging nangyayari. Hit and miss. Huhulaan, sasabihin ito yung propesya, galing sa Diyos, pero hit and miss. For example, uh, Uy, yung dalawa mong anak, pag laki niyan, may prophecy ako. Magiging doktor yung dalawang yan. Di ba? Nakagalak, di ba? Wow! Nice prophecy. Let's be careful. Let's not use the word prophecy. Let's not use sinabi ni Lord. And then, eventually, out of the two, isa naging doktor. Praise God, di ba? Prophecy yan. Prophecy fulfilled. Yung pangalawa, hindi. Hindi naging doktor. So, paano yun? Ay, kasi, hindi niya sinunod yung gusto ni Lord, kaya, hindi siya naging doktor. It's not biblical prophecy. That's, not biblical prophecy. Because biblical prophecy is the foretelling declaring what God has revealed. God in His sovereignty will make it happen because it is a declaration of God's declaration. That's foretelling. That's declaring what God has revealed. And today, let us not succumb to that, to that, nakaka-invite eh. Because we have the scripture 
God has revealed so much for us that it has been declared and written for us. Inspired by the Holy Spirit, the writers has written down, have written down all God wanted us to learn and to receive all His revelations. That's biblical prophecy. When God declared that in Bethlehem will born that shepherd of Israel, it happened. It happened. In spite of all the distractions, the troubles, the concerns, pangaharang, pagpapatay ng mga bata ni King Herod, it all happened in accordance to biblical prophecy. It is what God has declared, it is what will happen. Hindi yung hit and miss. Alright? So, King of the Jews, the Messiah will come. King of the Jews. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from whom you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people, Israel. Yan yung prophecy, written 800 years ago, before the birth of Jesus. Ang tagal ng waiting. Inip na inip na mga Israelites. Kailan ba darating yung Messiah? But in God's timeline, in God's sovereign plan, it happened. Nangyari ang kapanganakan ng Messiah, ni Kristo, ni Jesus, ang hari ng mga Hudyo. And according to the prophecy, he will be born in Bethlehem. Now, let's go to, again, in verse 3. Let's go back to Matthew chapter 3, uh, chapter 2, verse 3. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Troubled, see Herod the king. Wow, ng wise men, hinahanap yung king of the Jews. And assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet. It is a fulfillment of the prophetic words found in Micah chapter 5, verse 2. Biblical prophecy fulfilled because God has declared so. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. Kailan ba? Lumabas yung star? Tinatanong ni Herod para matansya niya. And he sent them to Bethlehem saying, Go, sabi ni Herod, the mga wise men, go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, pag nakita na nyo yung king of the Jews na sinasabi nyo, bring me word, pakisabi sa akin, messenger or biber, walang reaction. <laughs> yes, sir. And I too may come and worship him. Pakunwari si King Herod, pupunta din ako, mag-worship din ako. Paalam nyo kung kailan, saan, pag nakita na nyo, sabi ni Herod sa mga wise men. Verse 9, After listening to the king, they went on their way, and behold, the star that they had seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. So sinunda nila yung star hanggang nung nakita nila tumigil yung star, tumutok do sa unasan si Jesus at doon sila ay nag-worship. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. So I was trying to reflect on this. Okay. Rejoice exceedingly with great joy. Siguro part na rin yun. Ang tagal na nag-travel, di ba? So pag napon sila, nag-wonder sila, makikita ba namin? Tama ba tong interpretation namin about the star, about the fulfillment of the prophetic words? And then it happened. Right? Punong-puno sila ng kagalakan. Ang sabi doon, they rejoice. Nagalak sila ng nag-uumapaw na kagalakan. An experience that you and I can have when we come to our Messiah. 
As the Word of God, the Spirit of God continues to lead us back to God in our journeys in life. Yes, many moments, parang wala lang. Gigising tayo, tatrabaho, mag-aaral, tutulog, parang wala lang. Pero there will be moments wherein you, God will allow us to, to be drawn closer to Him and to experience Him, to find once again His faithfulness, His power, His great love for us. And it is those mon- many moments in our lives that we go back to we always go back to, wow, I remember that experience. Even that experience na nakilala mong Panginoong Isus, nagisnan mo, yung kanyang pagmamahal sa'yo, siya ang Diyos na namatay para sa'yo. Wow, that very moment. Go back there. O kaya meron kang struggles, and eventually, the Lord provided, the Lord helped you, and then eventually, the Lord has blessed you with success, and even with going through the struggles, you go back to that joy, to that experience. Because you had found Christ, you had this wonderful encounter with Christ. They rejoice exceedingly with great joy. Diba? Rejoice, joy, exceedingly great. Nag-uumapaw na kagalakan. I know, it's hard if you're in some kind of situation na uh, hindi mo pa makita yung light at the end of the tunnel. Maybe at this very moment, you're still wondering, just like the wise men. They were wondering, makikita ba naman talaga namin to? Oh, man of little faith, just like us, <laughs> people of little faith. But then eventually, the Lord has granted them that wonderful success of discovering what God has led them to do. That's their very experience. Rejoicing exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, young wise men went into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother. Ngayon, yung wise men ba, lalagay natin sa manger? Uh, some scholars disagree because nasa bahay na si Jesus. Wala na sa sabsaban. And they saw the child. Hindi na infant, but a Greek term that is being used for toddler. So, hindi na probably infant. And then eventually, when, when King Herod knew na naisan siya ng mga wise men, di ba sabi niya sa mga wise men, balikan niyo ako ha, viber niyo ako, messenger niyo ako, text niyo ako, email, or lagay niyo kahit sa TikTok. Basta paalam niyo lang na kung nakita na niyo, mag, maganda kayo, mag-real. Para malaman ko. And eh, yung mga wise men, uh, they were warned in the dream not to return to Herod, they departed their own country by another way. So, hindi nag-report yung mga wise men. Wala po kami load. And so, when King Herod knew that the wise men did not report, na isaan siya ng mga wise men, anong ginawa niya? Pinapatay niya yung mga bata, mga sanggol, mga bata, na lalaki, two years and below. Two years and below. So, that goes to say na it took a while for the wise men to reach Jesus. Hindi na yung infant. Okay? So, again, hindi natin kailangan pag-awayan kung lalagyan nyo ng, ng inyong bilen. But, for your information, so that you are knowledgeable of the Word of God, this is what the Word of God tells us. Okay? And they, when they entered the house, they saw Mary and Jesus. They fell down and worshipped Him. If there's one thing we all need to be reminded of, of this story. It is this, the response of the wise men when they saw Jesus. They fell down and worshipped Him. They fell down. Dumapa upang sumamba. 
Imagine, learned man and probably wealthy because they were able to carry gifts that were expensive during that time. And yet, they humbled themselves, they fell down, and worshiped Jesus. Sinamba nila ang Panginoong Jesus. And then opening their treasures, they offered him gifts. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Tatlong uri ng regalo. These three gifts in their culture are common when kings or other people come to visit somebody very important, like another king, Isaiah. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Epa, and from those Sheba will come. They will bring gold and frankincense and shall bring good news and praises to the Lord. Gifts were given to symbolize their surrender as they down, fell down and worshipped Him. So, as an expression of their worship, nagdala sila ng gifts, but more than that, they fell down and worshipped Jesus. Sumamba sila. Because they recognized that this child that was born was not a common, regular child, but the one prophesied a long time ago, the Messiah who was to be born in Bethlehem. Now, scholars have different opinions with regard to ano yung symbolisms ng tatlong gifts na to. But let me share with you some of them. Gold. A gift given to symbolize the kingship of Jesus. Dahil yun nga ang dinadala sa mga kings. So gold. Very expensive. Hindi yan yung mga gold rings. Huwag nyo isipin yung gold earrings. <laughs> Uh, gold na uh, probably hindi makinis, but they were the ones brought by the wise men to be offered to Jesus. A symbolism of the kingship. Because indeed, in the prophecy, Jesus is the king of the Jews. King. And in cultures as such, when you say king, Anong sabi ng king, hindi na babale. You surrender all to the king. That goes to say that Jesus is our king and we surrender everything to him. Whatever Jesus says, whatever God says, we come to worship with a heart of surrender. Kahit mahirap. Even if we struggle, we bow in worship, in surrender. That's gold. That's one of the three gifts. The second is frankincense. A gift given to symbolize the divinity of Jesus. Dahil yun ang incense na ginagamit na ino-offer sa altar. Alam ba niyo yung amoy ng frankincense? Should I pass on? I was thinking of doing a, like a Disney theme park 5D experience, mag-spray sa mga aircon para yung buong room ay mag-amoy frankincense. Kaya lang, baka ang iba sa inyo may allergy. Ito yung amoy ng frankincense. Sino gustong umamoy? Limang piso lang. <laughs> Pwede rin. <laughs> Later on, if you, if you want to amoy yan. This is frankincense, okay? And the next gift, oh, ah, frankincense is being used uh, as, a, as the incense. You know, in incense during that time. So in the Old Testament, they're using incense as, as a way of offering to God. So frankincense. So a, a symbol of the divinity of Jesus. Jesus being God. Hindi siya tao lamang. Siya ang Diyos na nagkatawang ta. When we think of Jesus taking the form of man, let us uh, be sure of how we say it. Siya ang Diyos na nagkatawang tao. Okay. 
hindi siya hindi na wala ang kanyang pagkadiyos ngunit siya ang Diyos na nagkatawang tao kung gusto niyo sabihin in another way he is the god who added to himself the form of a human siya ang Diyos na idinagdag sa sarili niya ang anyo ng isang tao he is the god who who never ceased to be a god but he is the god who became man, taking the form of a servant who died for us. So that's frankincense. And the third one is mirror. A gift given to symbolize the death of Jesus. Bakit? Kasi yung mirror, yun yung ginagam sa pag-embalming in that time. So I was doing a little reading. Siyempre, iba't iba yung pinagalingan na plant. May varieties, anong lo- locality. So, yung amoy naman ng mirror ay ito. ta So, kung gusto rin maamoy. Uh, when we traveled. So, mirror. Kung gusto nyo maamoy, mamaya, you can come here. Okay, so... Gold, frankincense, and mirror. Because mirror, during that time, was being used pang mo, so it symbolizes the, or foreshadowed the death of Jesus, knowing that Jesus was born with that mission to die for us. In yung kanyang mission. So that gift foreshadowed, now one day, Jesus is going to die on the cross to die for us. So three gifts. Gold, frankincense, and mirror. Sa Tagalog, ginto, incenso, uh, and pangatlo, mira. Wow, galing. Sino yung nakasagot doon? Okay, so three gifts. Now, three gifts to symbolize significant reality and truth about Jesus Christ. Gold to symbolize his kingship, frankincense to symbolize his divinity, mirror to signify to signify his future death. Three gifts. So gifts matter. Uh, they symbolize a lot of things. Ngayon, as I was reflecting on this gifts and the sermon, and then I thought of this. Sabi ko, uh, ito yung gift na binigay sa akin. Buti na lang, hindi mirror. Ma? <laughs> <laughs> hindi rin naman pwedeng frankincense. Hindi naman ako God. Hindi naman gold. Kasi, unless... Uh, Mahal, di ba? So, hindi rin naman ako king. So, ito yung binigay sa akin. Sabi ko, Can I have a volunteer to help me? Any volunteer? Okay, volunteer. O kaya Elder Lloyd? Yeah, this. I was trying, ano kaya symbolism nito? Hindi naman ako pwede bigyan ng gold, hindi ako pwede bigyan ng frankincense, hindi ako pwede bigyan ng, syempre ayaw ko naman ng mirror. Uh, ano kaya symbolism nito? God, God is an amazing God, right? He orchestrates things in our lives. So, ano yung symbolism ng langgana? Buti lang, hindi ako binigyan ng iPhone 15, di ba? Uh, Pimba yung una kong joke nung sinabi ko, hindi yun nangyari. Sabi ko, batya. So, langgana binigyan sa akin. And so, ano yung symbolism nito? You have to remove your shoes.
what I do know, God has called me to be a servant. When Jesus knew that he was about to be nailed on the cross, he gathered his disciples and he washed their feet. He came not to be served, but to serve. And so, God ordained it. Humingi ako ng iPhone, di ako binigyan. Binigyan ako ng planggana. So I'll try to reflect this as a symbol that God has called me to do, to be a servant. To wash the disciples' feet because that's my calling. Our calling is to serve the King that we worship. Thank you. Let's go back to the story of the wise men. Let's also reflect on the whole story, God and the wise men. So this is a theological lesson that I would say it again. I shared this in the past. God's sovereignty and man's response. God is the sovereign God. He's the God who is control. Nothing surprises our God. He can see all things. He can ordain. He can ordain all things. Siya yung kumikilos. Lahat ng celebrations natin, lahat ng pains natin, lahat ng sorrows natin, lahat ng rejoicing natin, alam ni Lord lahat yan. So God ordained that the wise men will hear about the birth of the king of the Jews. God ordained that the star will shine, will rise, and God ordained that these wise men will notice it. And God ordained that these wise men will travel to proceed and to go to Jerusalem. God ordained it. And then 800 years ago, it was prophesied the Messiah will be born in Bethlehem. God planned it out. Kahit hindi taga Bethlehem, o oh, nawala sa Bethlehem, si Joseph, si Mary, kinailangan nila mag-travel because God ordained na ang census ay mangyari at kinailangan ni Joseph and Mary mag-travel sa Bethlehem. Kaya sila ay nasa Bethlehem. And there was no room in the inn. That's why Jesus was to born in a manger. God ordained it. Now, the wise men could have just ignored it, but they responded with faith with love, with worship. So they obeyed. And then Jesus was born. The wise men came. They offered gifts. Did they really know what those gifts are for in symbolism? We can debate about that. We can discuss, but God ordained it that they will bring those gifts in that period of time with such Expensive, important gifts. And so they came and worshipped. They bowed down. Because God, the sovereign God, has ordained it. Ordained, planned out in his sovereign mind, Jesus, God himself, came to be born for us. Because God is God. it will be one of the many truths and lessons that you and I will continue to learn as God allows us experiences in this journey we call life. But God is sovereign. 
you and I are still learning. But as we remember this story, let us keep that in mind. God is the one who prompted the wise men to come and worship the one true king. Talking about love, talking about gift, we all know this verse. Let's read it together. For God... For God so loved us that He gave His only Son. Gift. The act of giving that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have eternal life. Again, pag nagsishare tayo ng gospel, mamaya magsishare tayo ng gospel, sabihin natin ang eternal life way, sure ka pupunta sa akin. That's true. That's tama yun. But eternal life is more than that. Eternal life ay nagsimula the very moment you trusted Jesus Christ. Eternal life na yun. Ngayon, nakaupo ka dyan, kayo nanonood sa bahay, tinanggap mo ng Panginoong Yesus, meron ka ng eternal. Nagsimula na ang iyong eternal life. Hindi ka na dito sa mundo, ngunit ikaw ay sa Panginoon na. Ang buhay mo ay hindi na ang focus ay temporal world, kundi yung eternal kingdom na ni God. Kasi nagsimula na ang iyong eternal life. At hinahanda ka na ng Panginoon para sa iyong eternal life. Let's read this together. For by grace... It is the gift of God. It is not by our works. We have received the grace of God, eternal life, through faith. Hindi ito dahil tayong gumawa, kundi si Jesus ang gumawa para sa atin. It is a gift. A gift given to us. May isa pa akong props. For final. Anong laman? Para makita nyo, dahil medyo malayo, it's a gift. Ah, kit na. Gift. The gift of Jesus Christ. The gift of eternal life. The gift that Christ loves us so much that He died for us sinners so that you and I may have eternal life. As we remember, celebrate Christmas, let's put our hearts and minds into the reality, the truth of the greatest gift given to us. The one born in the manger, Jesus Christ, our Savior, our Lord, our King, our God. We thank you, Lord. Thank you for such great love that you have poured out for us. Humbling yourself, taking the form of the servant, being born in a manger, Lord Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And we commit to you our celebration this Christmas. Lord, grant us all, Lord, the joyful celebration, knowing that there is exceeding joy in us. Because, Lord, you came for us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.